lot of the yachties here will use this as a stopover, overnighter, and uh, they'll leave a lot of stuff here. We're just gonna go through and have a bit of a look at um, some of the stuff that's in here. So this is, um, you can become a member of the, yacht, of the yacht club here. I think it costs you about $100 to $150, and these are some of the boats. on that hammock. Bit of hang time. Bit of hang time. We have a little little store with an honesty box and uh, some freshly freshly produced honey from the island. Bit of beeswax, some rosella jam and that's all this is growing up at the homestead. Just go around the corner here. There's an area just here. This is where we do cook ups. I think we might do a go uh, cook up of a goat a little bit later. Seating area. A whole bunch more stuff. Top here to the tree house. Thanks. And have a look at this view. So this is a map of Percy Island. We are located here in West Bay. Uh, this is the lagoon. This is where you can put your boat in bad weather as a mangrove system. I uh, also believe there are some mud crabs in there. Um, around here is Rescue Bay. Really good protection from the north northerlies. And also White's Bay as well. Some fantastic sand dunes over there, so we're gonna we're gonna go over there later and uh, try those out. Yesterday we went for a bit of a walk and we walked from here along the long track up to the homestead. We met, um, spent a bit of time up there with Kate and then we came down through the short track which is a really nice walk, a little bit steeper but really special. Part way into the walk from the beach to the homestead, we come across a tractor tire, which John and Kay drag with their four wheel drive to smooth the tracks. We bet Bray a whole bunch of money that he couldn't drag it the rest of the way, but always up for a challenge. Bray, you getting tired yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's hard with the dog. It used to be good to be back. <laughs> it used to be awesome to be back. Yeah, it's had the song as well. Can you have Up on Andy's lookout, we came across a couple of armillary dials. Alright, 
Alright, so here we got an armillary dial by the looks of it. First one I've seen. Um, what it is, is the time goes around the bow here. So you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. For the hours, and then wherever the, the sun is in the sky, and where the lines cross, or the steel crosses, should have a shadow over what the time is. So on there at the moment it says, my well, guess would be 11.20, 11.30, 11.20. Uh, quarter past 11. Pretty close. Pretty spot on. Pretty spot on. How would you use these back when maybe Mark was a kid or something? <laughs> <laughs> so this is another armillary dial. Or I think it's an armillary dial. And as you can see, this uh, this plate, uh, this is the winter equinox. And right now, it's around quarter past 11. And if we come around the other side, during the change of the seasons, during summertime, uh, the sun will be over this side, and the relative time would be there. So interesting, as we've got further up the island, this, the soils have actually become more clay. So it looks like it's actually helped hold the moisture, as opposed to the sandy soils lower on the island, and um, it's resulted in almost a rainforest effect. It's quite tranquil, actually. Who's this, Kate? Brodette. Because her granny was called Brody and she was very friendly. And so she's very friendly too, this one. So she's Brodette. After trekking through a scenic bushland, we arrived at the homestead to catch up with one of the island's custodians, Kate. Alright. Try it. Brazilian cherry. Huh. That's more like a chili. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty odd, eh? <laughs> Spending this time here was like taking a step back in time. And like when I go free diving for my seafood, Kate and John grow most of their food right here at the homestead. For me, this gives me a true appreciation for the food we eat, knowing where it came from, that it was harvested sustainably, and that it's fresh and you're able to taste the difference. For me, the honey was the winner with the bees here free from diseases found on the mainland and the pollen they collect from 100% native Australian island bushland. The goats were first introduced to the island in 1874 from the vessel The Pearl, which was given the mission of leaving goats and planting coconuts and other edible fruits to the islands in order to provide food stocks for passing vessels 
passing the Queensland coast. Europeans settled the island two years later and utilised the goat for meat, milk and skins over the next 130 years. So yesterday Kate brought us down a goat, uh, an island goat from here on Percy Island and uh, she was kind enough to do most of the hard work. And then yesterday, myself and Neil, we, um, we cut up that meat into smaller proportions. Um, I'll roll on that footage now. 83% of the island is now a national park, which prevents the goats from being listed as a heritage animal. By keeping the population of goats at a controlled number, the animals become an asset rather than a problem and reducing fire load and providing meat, milk and skins. Then last night, we, uh, we lit a fire here and we put the goat into some salt water and we boiled that for about five hours. And then this morning, we're gonna put that in the fridge and later this afternoon, we're gonna put that back into the camp oven, some veggies, and we're going to cook it again for another hour or so and she should be ready to go. So we look forward to that. Oh, look at that. How many hours has this been cooked for? Six. Five or six hours, yeah. Five or six hours, yeah. So, because it's a, uh, it was a male goat that had been de-sexed. Castrated. Yeah. Castrated. Quite tender. Flavoursome? Yeah, for wild goat, yeah, really flavoursome. Well we haven't we haven't even added flavours into uh, into this yet, so mm. very nice. We've got to the stage where we're gonna uh, we're gonna put our brew or our uh, our food in. So there's lots of different ingredients. The main one of course is the uh, the goat that we sort of pre-prepared yesterday. Um, so it boiled for, what do you think, maybe about four hours yesterday? Five, six. Yeah, possibly five or six hours, so that really tenderised it. And now we've added a whole heap of ingredients, so potatoes, pumpkin, uh, lots of garlic, some chilli, some olives, uh, some mustard, not mustard, uh, what am I looking for? Curry. Yeah, we'll put a heap of curry in there as well. So, that's the brew. And what are we going to do with it, Mark? All right. So Neil is going to put the pot on top of the uh, top of the plate just here, and then we're going to eat some of the coals from down below. And we're going to put it on top. That way, oh, taxi. <laughs> that way we're going to spread the heat rather than the heat just coming up from underneath. We actually with a camp oven, you want to have all the heat coming down from above. Well, so at once at least some of it. How heavy do you reckon that is, Dad? Oh, I reckon it's about ten kilos. So it's quite a bit of food there. Not, Same. As heavy as, not as heavy as the tusky I shot the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Just when I was thinking, I wish I was here. Pretty happy with that, Neil? Yeah. Smelling and looking good. Dad. This is the Jabati Karma. Jabati Karma. Or the tree grape, which is more nice. It's definitely the meat. It's the honey. Go on. Thank you. Here's to Kate. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much. Here's to our Father in Heaven that makes us. Yeah. Good. And gives us opportunities. Who gave us shipwreck? Who gave us shipwreck? The greatest but blessing of all. We learned it. We got the ship. We're, 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 the ship. Oh, all right, next ball. Yeah, me and my buddy. We already um, nicknamed him. What was his name? We met today. His name's Gaza. Gaza. Gaza the goat. <laughs> He doesn't talk much. He's on a strict diet. <laughs> <laughs> strict diet, Gazza. And he doesn't drink much beer, so... Uh, he's a good bloke, then. He's not bad, eh? Hey? <laughs> Join us next episode as we put back on the wetsuit for some stand-up paddle boarding and spear fishing, and collect and process some of the island's coconuts to make up fresh cream for one of my favourite dishes, coconut cream fish, here on Sail to Spear. Give Johnny a run for his money. Yeah. <laughs>